Hello everyone, today we're going to be reviewing the Snowbuster 1 Kids Winter Boots by Kamek. Thanks for joining us again, everyone. In a couple of our other videos, our top 12 tips for cold weather camping, and our video on snowshoes, poles, boots, and clothing, we mentioned these Snowbuster One boots by Kamek. Well, today we're going to be getting into a deeper gear review of these boots, which have proven to be favorites of ours. But just because they're a favorite, that doesn't mean that they're perfect for everything. So we're going to be getting into the pros and cons of these boots. In order for our discussion of the pros and cons to really make any sense, we need to take a moment and just talk about the different types of winter boots and their inherent strengths and weaknesses. We can think of four broad types of winter boots. Mountaineering boots, winter hiking boots, pack boots, and slip-on boots. What distinguishes a mountaineering boot besides the extra insulation is that it has a very stiff sole so that it can accept a technical crampon. This is designed to keep your foot from folding when you have the front points engaged on the ice or snow on the side of a mountain. Now, there really isn't a market for technical crampons for kids, although you can get a little creative. So there really isn't a market for kids' technical mountaineering boots either. Winter hiking boots are like warm weather hiking boots in that they usually have good ankle support, aggressive traction, and a tight enough fit to lock your foot in as you cover long distances. The winter differences are that the outer materials will be waterproof, and there will be additional insulation. Also, some boots will have a higher cuff than normal in order to keep the snow from creeping in the top of the boot. Now, pack boots are the modern version of boots that the Inuit used and are defined by a flexible inner boot that fits into a fully waterproof outer boot. The insulation of the inner boot, because it has loft that contains trapped air, makes these incredibly warm. Many of the Inuit, after all, lived and continue to live in the Arctic. As you can see, the Snowbuster is a pack boot. Then there are slip-on boots, of which I own none that I can show you. That's not to say that slip-ons don't serve a purpose. They are obviously super convenient. So if you want to take your boots on and off easily, and you aren't really concerned about having a super performant boot, these can be great. Think of a situation like you live in a mountain town where you need to throw on your boots when you go shovel a driveway or to go out and get the mail, or you just want something comfortable to slip on after you've gone skiing. They also tend to come in more fashionable design. So if you live in a cold weather place and you need a boot that isn't out of place at work, slip-on boots are usually a good way to go. Okay, so the Chemex Snowbuster one is a pack boot, but is it a good one? Well, we think it is a very good one. The boot's outer is a synthetic rubber that is lighter than standard rubber, and the entire outer is made of it. There's no seam that could leak, no tongue to focus water into the inside of the boot, no materials that are prone to saturation or getting wetted out. The soles rubber is more sticky than a standard rubber, and with the incorporation of multi-directional treads, we found that the kids have maintained pretty good traction walking over the hard snow and ice patches that we've encountered. The rubber is also very durable. We've scraped them over rock edges and ski edges and all manner of abrasion, and they've held up remarkably well. Now, one of the nicest features on the Snowbuster is the waterproof cuff with the elastic drawstring on the top of the boot that's already nine inches tall. This system works excellently to keep snow out on the top of the boot. And the drawstring is easy to grab and tighten, even for little hands wearing gloves. The inner boot is a six millimeter foam, which creates a lot of loft between your foot and the outer boot. That loft means trapped air, which means insulation. Kamek claims that this boot is comfortable up to minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we haven't taken the boot to minus 25, but we have been out in wind chills of about minus 15, and after asking the kids about their feet, they said they were nice and toasty. So for us, these boots have proven to be incredibly warm. With boots that can be warm in such cold temperatures, it's also possible for them to be too warm when it's not super cold out. The liner is therefore also moisture wicking. Now, some people will say that having a moisture wicking liner becomes a problem when you do an overnight trip because you now have to put those liners in your sleeping bag overnight to dry them out. 
I actually think that that's an advantage. Me and the kids like putting our liners in the sleeping bag. Yes, it dries them out, but it also keeps them warm. I hate putting on an icy single boot when I get up in the morning. With a double boot and a liner in a sleeping bag, we get to put our feet into a nice warm environment in the morning. So rather than having to get our feet warm in the morning, we get to keep our feet warm in the morning. Okay, so the boots are warm. That's what double boots, whether they be mountaineering boots or they be pack boots, that's what they're supposed to be. That's what they excel at. But there are a few things that pack boots aren't as good for, although these snowbusters do a little better with some of these things than other pack boots we've tried. Pack boots, as a general rule, aren't going to have as tight a fit as a winter hiking boot because there's a boot inside of another boot, you're gonna have some play going on. Your foot can move a little bit inside the liner and the liner can move a little bit inside the outer boot. So you're generally gonna get less support. Some people refer to pack boots as feeling like they have a sloppy fit. Also, you can see that the flexible liner along with the flexible outer boot means that there isn't a lot of ankle support. Pack boots are also generally heavier than winter hiking boots. You have two integrated boots. And as we've discussed on other videos, weight on your feet actually takes more energy than if you have the same amount of weight on your back. And finally, the soles are designed for snow and ice. And so with some pack boots, you can run into traction issues when you get on dry or mixed terrain. All of these things combine to make it, again, the general rule that pack boots aren't great for general purpose hiking or for covering a lot of distance, even in the winter. But the Snowbusters seem to fit true to size and lock in a little better than other pack boots. Ours weigh 28 ounces per pair in our kids' sizes, which isn't light, but they aren't as heavy as other pack boots. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that they're as good at hiking as winter hikers are, but we've done a lot of miles on them on snowshoes carrying heavy packs. And when we go rock climbing in the winter, we bring them along so that the kids have something warm to keep their feet in when they're taking a break from the wall. So we've done some reasonable distance carrying weight and over dry ground. No blisters, no instability, and no complaints from the kids. But again, if you're wanting a boot that does true long distance winter hiking, you probably want a boot that's designed for that specific activity. Finally, it's also worth noting Kamek's laudable approach to sustainability. These particular models of boots are manufactured in Canada, although some other models are made in the USA. They all use recycled rubber for the outers and recycled plastics for the liners. They also recycle most of the water that they use in the manufacturing process. So that's it. That's our take on the Kamek Snowbuster Ones. Like I said, we are really happy with these boots. They are super warm, super durable, super comfortable, and just enough of an all-rounder to make hiking in them really possible. Adding the exceptionally reasonable prices that we've been able to find, and we don't twitch as we have to flop down dollars on these things, that we know the kids are just going to outgrow eventually anyway. So do any of you have any secret winter clothing or gear that you've found to be great for your kids? Let us know in the comments section. If this video was helpful and informative, you can support us by hitting that like button. If you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We release a new video every week. And on that note, if there's specific content you'd like to see as we put those new videos out, you can let us know your suggestions in the comments section as well so that we can keep on helping you get more out of that big outside.